Hey, Coach Gurney here. Long time no see. Um, I've been been a pretty busy boy, to be honest, but today I'm going to finally sit down and, and review uh, my latest little investment in the sort of, not just the, the coaching space, but the, the fitting space. Um, about a month ago and a bit, uh, Terry, who co-founded Body Track, um, great guy, uh, sent me a little message telling me he's got a little something new out and I uh, had a look into it and um, it could be a complete game changer far as certainly far as fitting goes and shaft fitting goes because you know it's always been entertaining fitting people to different driver shafts and there is a slight art to it with getting the right swing speed matching the right flex and then the right spin rate to match the right weight and then kind of the torque area of the shaft or how it twists at the very end there tip area it's uh to kind of help with players reduce or increase how the face closure rate goes on so there's certainly an art to it but you know it was always a lot of hit and miss and a lot of trial and error to find the right one whereas the system that he's come up with and i'm, I'm going to take you through it is um mind-blowing what it kind of does is it uses the, the pressure mat the body track pressure mat and as you're hitting a ball, it looks at your ground force reactions and your pressure trace. And from there, there's a direct correlation generally between not only the force you put on the ground and your clubhead speed, but also how you use the ground as to what shaft's going to help you release the head the best. <laughs> Sounds crazy. Um, and the first few times I tried it, I was extremely skeptical, shall we say. Um, haven't already... I haven't already invested thousands of bucks in it. I was still skeptical at first, but uh, yeah, it's it's quite mind blowing, really, how it works. And uh, I'll give you a little test run. But the the, the basics are: you've got full five shafts uh, from the light green, dark green, black, yellow, red, and each one of these shafts matches a different load pattern. So it's called load factor. So in other words, when you hit the, you make a swing, and how you load the shaft, unload the shaft, how you use the ground. There's different ways in which the shaft is going to be best releasing for you and help you not only optimize your ball speed, which it seems to do amazingly well, but also really help you hit a lot more fairways. So, it's, you know, we always said the shaft was engine room um, and finding a system that does that both super quickly, which is great from a fitting aspect as opposed to spending, you know, 45 minutes searching for something if you can hit several balls and get pretty close to where you want to be at very quickly it's time saver and a performance gainer so we're going to jump in the on form app now i'm going to hit a ball a few balls from face on it will flip me into a left hander because i'm going to do a screen record so i'm not normally a lefty but it will make me into a left hander not that it's going to change any of the data points at all um, and then i'll show you how how the system works with a few different swing techniques a few different load patterns a few different club eight speed ranges and uh, yeah, give you some idea of how this all works. It's pretty mind bending um, from a from an aspect there to be able to hit a ball and instantly know the. I mean, you can always look at clubhead speed, and we can give you a pretty good idea of of shaft flex. But to know not only the flex of the shaft, but how what different stiffness in the midsection and the butt section and the tip area is going to be best for you as a player, what weight's going to help you the best, and um, yeah, it's pretty pretty crazy stuff. Obviously, there's going to be a, a there's several numbers there. There's a load factor, which is the, the color we start on, and then there's also now they've figured out how to get read the torque as well. So, the, the torque number is whether or how much you tip the shaft. So, the the lower that that torque number, the more you're going to go ahead and, and tip it to reduce the active tip. And then for players that need a little bit more down the bottom there, you're just going to butter them. So, there's a whole bunch going on. But from a fitter's aspect and from a player's aspect, it's very quick, um, pretty simple once you're using it. And um, it could really revolutionize how we, yeah, certainly how we fit, not only words, but the, the technology is getting thrown into irons too. So it could definitely be a massive game changer. But let's dive in, have a look at it. Um, I'm certainly going to be going ahead and offering a whole bunch of free experience fittings just to see how people find it. Um, and uh, a little bit I've used it myself and with two or three people I've got into it it's been quite amazing the performance gains so let's dive in and see what you think alright so here we are we got the we got the body track mat going uh, 
we've got the swing balance AI shaft in hand. Um, obviously, I didn't mention, but all these shafts are made by Acura, so it's the performance division of True Temper. So they're all very high spec. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to hit some balls, work my way through some different uh, speed ranges and load patterns. Uh, i got the old track man going. I'm not going to dive too much into swapping screens and stuff. I want to kind of keep this as short and as simple as possible um, in a very uh, interesting manner. But, um, yeah, so I'll whack a couple different ones, show you what different swings will kind of produce different load patterns. Um, we'll start with kind of your... Uh, so your lower speed, maybe a lady or a senior golfer, someone that doesn't swing and use the ground a ton. Um, and that's pretty much where we start with the lowest load shaft. But let's, let's whack one and show you the whole graph, right? So we'll get set up. We'll let the, let the mat center. Oh, cool. No, that's good to go, I think. Cool. Yeah, we're good to go. All right, let's try and swing one uh, like your nice little, like a lady golfer kind of. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 61 mile an hour, 92 mile an hour, perfect smash. Uh, ladies kind of swing. And we'll have a look here at what's going on. So let's grab this. Do, do, do. So down the bottom here, you can see... Um, What's going on far as the trace, very lateral, not much crazy force going into the ground, not sort of still peaking at the right time and everything. I can't help myself. But the load factor number there down at 82 is very low. So I'm not jumping around. It's not very violent. Um, if we go to normal speed, and you can just see it at normal speed, this is kind of what you'll probably see on the average game of golf there. Nothing too crazy, nothing too violent. And this shaft right here has got a lot of torque, a lot of play. It's designed to really help launch the ball higher, get more ball speed, get it going. Um, you can still, I mean, I can swing the shaft at 100 mile an hour and it still feels kind of good. And you can swing it at 50 mile an hour and it still feels kind of good. It's a very versatile shaft, but it's mainly for those real lateral trace players. So that there's not a lot of up and down. There's not a lot of toe. There's not a pressure jumping around the place. Very stable, very quiet lower body. And mainly just a little low lever armsy swing. Let's go up a little gear, maybe get a little kind of cutty over the toppy and uh, have a little look at that one. So let's dive into that. Um, all the shafts that I'm doing here, we all got the Orfit system, which is kind of cool. So that's a little system in here with the tip that you can change. We can put any head on here. So um, I'm using at the moment, the driver I've got here is my old Sub-70. Um, yeah, I know what Sub-70, but it's not a whole video, right? <laughs> Uh, but with that tip, the all fit tip, we can go ahead and with the little collar, doo -doo -doo, we can go ahead and put anything on there. Um, Callaway Ping, Telemade, PXG, Shrixen. So, as far as shaft fitting purposes goes, you can put any head on that tip and you're golden. So, let me go ahead and swing one a little bit more normal. For me, kind of what you'd see probably on a Saturday morning out there at your local club. <laughs> Having real, not really the guy that warms up too much. Uh, doesn't have the greatest ground pressure reactions. Not too fussed and all that stuff. Wants to hit it obviously straighter and further. Has a tendency to, to kind of maybe fall back a little bit through impact or come across it, but Let's dive on in with another one of these. Got the, the darker green, the medium low shaft, but let me have a little go with this one. And this one feels way more stable, shall we say? Let's get centered. Let me have a go. Cool. Happy days there. Cool. All right. Try to make that one. Try to swing a little bit more down and left than my normal. Yeah, level. Swung a little bit across it. Speed up to 77 mile an hour. And then we can see here how the, the load pattern is slightly increased, right? So it's up to 111. Didn't get all the readings there. We'll whack a couple more with this one, eh? But you can see here as the speed and the load gets up and the swing gets more violent, so does the load pattern. So let's try that again, boss. Right? Get another ball. Ah, booty. Dots up. Let's get set up. Centered. Beautiful. 
There we go. That's like the club player. 120 ball speed, 83 mile an hour, a little low fadey thing. Keep the spin pretty good. Here we go. Load started getting up again. Cool. Let's dive down in here. So you can see that load's creeping up as I get more speed, as I start to use the ground a little bit more, as I start to hit it a bit more, get a bit more swing length, a bit more load. I probably need to try a bit harder to get the old chicken wing there going on. But you see the torque numbers changed. So it's a little bit more talky. So this player is going to probably enjoy having a little bit of help down the bottom there. Oh, the other player didn't need too much. Wasn't really using anything. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got a little bit more pressure going. Still very lateral trace. Very, very lateral. So now I'm going to try hit one and try get dramatically more... Um, try to do a funky swing. Try and jump on my toes a little bit more over the top and see what happens. These are always fun moments when you try and do some slightly more enjoyable golf swings, right? So we'll try, sort of come over the top, get a bit steepy and lefty. Um, we'll give it a go anyways. Okay, cast it too, actually. Get exciting here. <laughs> so there you go. So it's a funky one, right? So the speed wasn't that high at all. Still 92 mile an hour. But this is where things get interesting. So as the player gets more exciting and the trace starts jumping all over the place, suddenly you'll start to see that. You can see here how the pressure started to back up and a bit more Z-tracy, so that kind of went sh -sh -sh -sh, a little bit more like that. This player here, even though he's not the fastest in the world, would probably benefit from a slightly stronger shaft than, than what his club head speed would normally be. Just help, you know, he'd just be way more consistent. A stronger shaft, but not tipped. Sounds crazy. Crazy stuff. But that would definitely help this particular player to optimize both his spin and like that one there spun up a bit more. So for him, the slightly stronger shafts and the higher end will actually help him launch and spin the ball more optimally. Sounds crazy, but actually true. And then we'll make one that's kind of your, uh, your kind of your local, what I call the local club champ swing. So a little bit more neutral, maybe one or two degrees down, like a down and right, like a low draw kind of a ball flight that you'd see from your better player at the club. Cool, we're good to go. Yeah, beauty. It covers the ball quite well, kind of a mid to low launch, only one degree up into our much more of a lateral trace. Haha. <laughs> so then you see something completely different, right? So this guy with a very neutral, very linear kind of swing doesn't jump all over the place. Actually is gonna perform a little bit better. Oh didn't get the best read in the world there. Let's try that one again. But this player here that does this move will generally actually not need the stiffest shaft in golf. The more you jump around uh, back up through impact, the more you're generally going to find the player is going to be a little bit better suited to something that is um, in the, the the green or even the, the black range. It's a little bit better for the more lateral load patterns. Cool. Cool. So that's like 101, it's like 105 mile an hour club head speed, that one. Cool, very lateral, not much backing up, not a super high load factor like the previous one because this wasn't jumping around. So this play is very stable. The yellow shaft's a lot stronger, but you can see here the trace is very minimal, very well balanced. There's not a lot of jumping all over the place. I'll show you a jumping all over the place swing <laughs> So that would be, like that for me is like a good iron swing too. It's pretty simple. There's not much backing up going on. Recent is nice and early. A little back up, couldn't help myself, but then the pressure's pretty forward and impact, pretty lateral. Ooh, pretty good action right there. Pretty good basic thing. So let's hit a couple a little harder and see some interesting load factors. So that guy right there would do a lot better, obviously, with the yellow shaft. Just so you know, it's kind of interesting. And the yellow shaft is a very different profile to the green one. 
just a lot stronger, a lot stiffer up the top. Still a little active down the bottom, but way more stable throughout the shaft, which should definitely suit a player that has a little bit of that little wee backup thing going on, but not too much crazy stuff. Let me hit one like I normally do when I'm attempting to play golf, which is slightly an extravagant movement, shall we call it? <laughs> Over the back fence guy. Because I like to um, use the ground as much as I can because I'm pretty bloody tiny um, weight-wise. Using the ground as much as I can to generate speed certainly helps. So I generally have lift my left heel, definitely have a little Z trace back up going on. All that though does help me optimize my angle of attack and my ball speed. But um, yeah, having a more stable shaft throughout the stiffness throughout certainly has dramatically improved my consistency. And it stops me getting these weird spin-ups to the right. Certainly, last time I played, and last couple of times I've tried it, it's dramatically improved how easy I found to square the club face up, which has been a lot of fun. To be but let's give this one a whack. Let's get centered. Beautiful. See what this one gives us. So that's kind of a little bit more like how I'd probably swing on the golf course, a little bit more violent. And you'll see here the old Z trace going on there. <laughs> I'll have to do another one for that. But we'll see how it definitely has the Z trace going on. Dip to do, dip to do, dip to do. Beautiful. So we see the pressure goes forward, goes back, and then as I'm coming down, it actually starts backing up and a jump and a very high load factor. So that's where you start getting into the heavier reed or X shafts. Let's have another jam at that though. Try that again. Oh, cool. Another jam. So I'll do another one of those little wee jumpy swings. Or my normal swing. I don't try to smack it over the back fence anyways. Cool. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Love it. Cool. Ah, there we go. Got everything. Beautiful. So here you can see the beautiful like Z trace there. And, uh, and as I'm swinging, the pressure goes there, the trace is there. <whistles> so that all helps me generate all the speed. It's not for everybody, but it does certainly help me hit up and right a lot more easily. So here you can see the load number at the top there gets very, very high. The more I use the ground, the higher that gets. And the torque figure there is kind of telling me how much I'd need to be doing a little bit of work here to increase the stability. But right there, I mean, with a red shaft, I don't need to be doing anything for because my speed plus is a little calculation we make with weight. And I'm certainly under 175 pounds, unfortunately. So I'd have a little wee adjustment there. My load factor isn't actually that high. It's a little bit less than that. Times 0 0.7, but still quite high. So still definitely red. And I'd go from there. Um, let's have a couple of little cut skis and see what the load factor is with that one. Kind of you'll probably... Not everyone stands up there and hit rip draws, right? <laughs> so let's dive out of there. Let's go back in here. Let's hit a swing where this would definitely feel like the wrong shaft. It feels very comfortable when I'm doing my normal swing, this particular shaft. Just like when I'm swinging it real slow with no wrists, the kickier shafts feel way better as far as feel and delivery goes. But let's hit a little way, um, like a good, good player's cut out there. Centered. Cool. Oh, that's a pretty good club player's little fade there. Yeah. Could be standing in the wrong part of the mat there, coach. Weren't you? Weren't you? Too far back, coach. A little trial and error still to go with this system. But we're getting there. Right. Let's dive on in again. There it is. Cool. The auto detects a cool little thing on forms created. We can hit. And you can actually just keep hitting. You don't actually have to cancel out. You just keep hitting and getting into the feedback loop. But that's another whole story. Cool. I think we're good to go. Oh, yeah, that'd be a pretty good call by a little fade move there. Very different trace pattern. Yeah. So here, like, still that speed. It's still around 100 mile an hour. But you can see how the load factor number is totally different. It's only a 
128. So this guy that comes and works a little bit left, as I've seen when I have fitted players, they still have pretty good speed. But because they don't get this different, really different load pattern, they don't load violently forward and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, they just generate totally different load patterns altogether. And the shaft that would be perfect for them has got nothing to do with their club eight speed. It's, it's uh, quite delightful. But it's another one of that same move. Make sure that that's perfect. Grab the old birdie tee. Oh, yellow Pro V. Little club play, there you go, two up, little fade, 98 mile an hour. Yeah, there you go. So it's still pretty good, and you can see here with the play like that, very linear. It's going to be fitting right in that green, that black range. So a shaft that still feels pretty solid, it would be, but the red shaft would be terrible for this play. He's just going to do what I just did there, just spins out to the right a ton. Because this guy needs a shaft that helps him a little bit more, a little bit more torque. A little bit better flex. Probably should have been recording these videos, ball fights too, to help you see that. But the player swings like this, very neutral par, like zero swing direction, two degrees left par, it's a little left. For him, something that's too rigid throughout the whole shaft, he's just going to slice like crazy. Even though he's still pretty good, pretty good speed, like 100 mile an hour, he would want a shaft that actually has a little bit more of an active tip, uh, believe it or not. So. That's where this system is just phenomenal to be able to get that combo. Because normally I wouldn't go to that flex with this particular player at that speed. I'd probably go something a lot stiffer and then he'd just slice it all day and be like, man, this feels terrible. Whereas if you actually get something that's a bit more active, um, he just finds it real easy to square up and loves it. And then you get a player like myself that loves to use the ground and Z trace it. And I get that same shaft, it's a bit active. I hit it miles off the planet and then I get something that's a bit firmer and stiffer throughout the shaft i just love it because it's so easy for me to square up so what is easy for me to square up and easy for another player to square up with our our patterns is two totally different things and that is a lot of it's dependent on how you're using the ground believe it or not right hope that kind of makes sense does it does it hopefully <laughs> All right, so I hope that was of some benefit to you, taking you all through that. I know it was, uh, there was a couple of little misreads in there, but I, I was just using my little iPhone and asking it to connect to both the, the AirPods, the body track mat, and screen record at the same time. So it's asking a lot of the little processor on it. But I think we've got a general idea there of kind of how the system works. Um, it's definitely well worth having a, having a bash on and seeing the different results. Uh, from there, you can definitely, if, because obviously these are extremely high quality shafts, might be out of the price point of a few people, and there are a few other options there that we can kind of match the profiles, which I've tried to do a little bit. I've tried to go, okay, well, here's a mid flex, mid kick point shaft that would similarly suit, and sometimes I've got, I've got lucky in that space, which is great, but I have certainly found um, the actual shaft to fit the actual player has been remarkably good so it's definitely worth a try um in that space and like i said with the all system and all the different cogs it, it literally fits every single brand now um which is super cool so you don't need to change your driver head just bring that head along click click and she goes and uh, you can see what fits you best it's it's definitely worth having a go thanks for your time